The 1920s was an age of dramatic social and political change. World War I brought victory and prosperity to the United States, but it also resulted in a delicate America. The threat of emerging ideologies such as communism and the Harlem Renaissance did not settle well with the American public because it forced them to think what it actually meant to be an American citizen. The Supreme Court case of a man named Bogosin Thin shows the extent that America would go to prove who should and shouldn't be considered an American. Bogosin Thin came to America from India in 1912 to further his education. When settled in the United States, he supported himself by working in the lumber mills. When America entered World War I, he joined the United States Army and was granted American citizenship. However, his citizenship was quickly taken away by the Immigration and Naturalization Service. He applied for citizenship again in 1919 under the Naturalization Act of 1906, which allowed only free white people and people of African descent to become U.S. citizens by naturalization. The Immigration and Naturalization Service turned him down once more and later sent his case to the Supreme Court. Thin's participation in World War I and his contribution to the American labor system truly made him believe that he was meant to be an American. Thin risked his life fighting for a country that ultimately didn't want him as a citizen. Thin strongly argued that because he is in the same category as a white man and holds the highest ranking within the Hindu hierarchy, he should be granted citizenship. He was able to do this because the Naturalization Act of 1906 allowed some interpretation to occur in regards to what it meant to be a free white person. However, by presenting the Caucasian race as equivalent to the free white man, Thin complicated his own case. The Supreme Court, on the other hand, argued that the word Caucasian not only was not presented in the law, but was probably unfamiliar to the original founding fathers in the year 1790. By saying this, the court concluded that although Indians and white Americans were both Caucasians, the concept of whiteness made them different. The Supreme Court argued that the everyday white American would be very surprised to think that someone like Thin would be white. The Supreme Court began to define whiteness by what the everyday white person thought whiteness was. The Supreme Court basically depended on the majority population to decide who to include in the white category. Thin could not be a citizen because he didn't fit into the category. The Supreme Court was now viewing race as something less than biological and dealing more with character. So why does this matter to us, to nuestra comunidad? Well, the U.S. versus Thin court case set the foundation for who could be considered an American. It exposed the ability of the government and the majority of the population to interpret U.S. principles to their own benefit or in other words, cuando le conviene. When the Latinx population was introduced to the American public, it was more complex to put them into a category because they were so diverse. People within the Latinx community are genetically different, but there's common qualities they hold that bring them together. The whiteness argument that the Supreme Court used shows this cultural importance. I think it's really interesting to point out that the people that enter the United States often feel the need to lose their culture and adapt to the white culture because they wish to belong and eventually become a citizen. Even the Latinx people who were born here but have parents born in other countries don't feel like they are citizens because they don't have the white culture and often don't want to. This Supreme Court case allows us to see that American citizenship is more than complying to the laws. To be an American is to force individuals to become what the American society wants him or her to be.